if the reason that you didn't do well in H2 math is because you actually didn't study, my best recommendation to you is please study. But if you have genuinely put in the effort, but yet the result didn't turn out the way that you have expected, please do not give up in H2 math. H2 math is a great subject. It will not just be the subject that can open up for us a lot of opportunities when it comes to selecting courses in a university, but it will also be the subject that can really help us in terms of improving our problem solving skill. Let me share with you some common reasons why students not do well in exams and some changes that I will recommend. I will also be conducting a JC1 H2 Math revision class during the upcoming holidays. So do consider joining me in my class. I will be elaborating a little bit more about this later. And I will also be leaving a link in the description. When learning or revising higher level math topics, it should not just be about road practice. Because for some of these topics, they may consist of crucial theories and concepts that need to be well understood before any practice is going to make sense. So when looking at individual topics, we should at first assess whether the topic should be approached and studied as a theory-centric topic or whether it should be studied as a practice-centric topic. For example, um, functions, for example, factors, these are the more theory-centric topics. And we should be spending proportionally more time understanding the theories and and reasons before we start practicing. But if we tend to get impatient and we decided to skip establishing the foundational concept and just plunge directly into attempting questions, then most likely the revision time that we have spent will not be able to gain us the maximum amount of marks in the exam. In the exam, every mark is going to count. About 30% of our H2 math syllabus will consist of these theory-centric topics. And on the other hand, some topics are more practice-centric. For example, topics like APGP, topics like differentiation and integration techniques, these are more practice-centric topics. So we should be spending a proportionally more time in terms of practicing when it comes to revision. So students who lack that practice will tend to not do well. But students who do well in secondary school and who are actually pretty much used to practicing when it comes to the exam, it, they will generally do better in, when it comes to these few topics. So in the case of practice-centric topic, my recommendation will be for you guys to be practicing as much as possible. But when it comes to the more theory-centric topic, you need to make sure that you patiently sit down and go through the concepts and make sure that you have a good grasp of the theories before you start practicing. To score well in H2 math, it is not just about getting familiar with the theories and examples in our lecture notes and tutorials. Not everyone taking H2 math will be specializing in math in the future. So have you wondered why? Why is it that H2 math is still such an important subject in JC? It is because while learning higher level math, we are going to be acquiring a problem solving skill set. And unlike questions that we have encountered in secondary school, H2 math questions have much fewer instructional components. And the challenge is to independently piece the puzzle together with little or sometimes with no guidance at all. This will require us to first be definitely very well versed with H2 math theories and to be exposed to a wide variety of examples. But the key is to be able to strategically and appropriately integrate and improvise whatever that we have learned in the books to solve for an immediate problem that is posted to us by the question. It won't be easy to acquire this problem solving skill set overnight. So doing last minute revision definitely is not going to help us in our exam. Another reason why some students struggle to problem solve in the exams is because while they are doing their revision, they rely very, very heavily on the fact that they can read and understand a given set of solution. But being able to understand solution, although it is a very valuable kind of head knowledge, it is not going to be an indicator of whether we are still able to reproduce the similar set of solution again independently. So my suggestion is to be patient and let's make sure that we take our time to think through a certain problem and to work on this problem solving ability of, our, of us so that we can try to solve problem with as little external influence as possible. And we will only refer to solutions or ask someone for help as our last resort. A full H2 math exam paper is 
three hours long. And for inexperienced students, they may perceive this to be plenty of time, leading to a lack of urgency when they are working through the exam questions. This may be especially so because for a typical format of a H2 math exam paper, it is to have the first half of the paper comprised of relatively easier and shorter questions. And some students tend to start off at an overly relaxed pace until when they reach the second half of the paper and realize that the questions are going to be getting tougher and that is also when they start rushing. And worse, because these questions are tougher, rushing through them will in turn cause them even more marks lost during the exam. We won't be able to specify exactly how much time we should be spending on each mark in our exam paper, but we should be mindful of our pace such that when a question is easier, we want to make sure we speed up. And so when we are practicing for questions, when, and when we are seeing questions that are easier, we want to make use of them to help ourselves to develop the habit of watching out for our careless mistakes so that we can continue to maintain at a high level of precision even when we speed up. By making sure that we attempt easier questions in the exam with more urgency, we will then be able to free up more time to be spent on the tougher questions that is probably going to be happening in the later part of the paper. And this will in turn increase the chances of us being able to find the correct way to solve these tougher questions and then scoring higher in our exams. Everyone faces different challenges when it comes to exams and tests. Some students may have this bad habit of being very careless in their algebra, or some students may be emotionally affected and start panicking and blacking out during the exams. But regardless of what your personal challenges are, I want to encourage you to continue to face them bravely because I believe that all these challenges can be overcome. As compared to my peers in JC and university, I was definitely not the fastest learner, but I've never given up. I will reflect upon my mistakes, I will find ways to improve upon them, and I will always end up building for myself a rock-solid foundation before every major exam, and I would become unshakable. I trust that for those of you who aren't giving up and are willing to continue to try harder, you will start to taste the fruits of your hard work soon. And for those of you who are interested in doing a thorough round of H2 math revision before 2022 starts, I will be conducting an intensive revision consisting of eight sessions from 30th of November to 23rd of December. And during these sessions, I will be thoroughly going through the JC1 H2 math topics and sharing how you can do better in each one of them in exams. So if you are interested, do head over to our website at www.achievers.com or click on the link in the description below. Once again, for those of you who have yet to know me, I am Jack from Achievers. We conduct awesome H2 math tuition and crash courses. If you find this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up and smash on that subscribe button to our channel.